This was like a real masterpiece. This is uh, an article by Herbert Buchsbaum in today's um, uh, New York Times, Finding the Past in a Slice of Rye. And he talks about uh, a very unique bakery in Savannah, Georgia. I never thought there were any Jews there. And it was a Jewish bakery, the only one in town. And it was uh, a story that combined also a visit to his uh, elderly mother and has to do with coronavirus and how it shut down businesses. And while this uh, bakery struggled to reopen with the, um, grandchild, the grandson who was a chef, um, st uh, in 2016 he reopened this bakery that had been um, uh, part of this uh, writer's childhood in, um, in post-war America but uh, mid 20th century but let's let's uh, read the beautiful words he had written the smell and taste of things proust wrote uh, that's the writer the french writer who wrote um in search of forgotten time if this is the good translation uh, marcel proust so he said the smell and taste of things hold in the tiny and almost impalpable drop of their essence the vast structure of recollection. A morsel of medline and a spoonful of tea evokes childhood in a French village. A bat of rye with Dijon mustard calls up mine in Savannah. In the white war silence of the plain back to New York, my mother's voice was already attenuating, attenuating in my head the solid force of her life fragmenting into snatches of half-remembered anecdotes. The rye bread was gone. It was as good as I remembered. So I love rye bread too. So he wrote that he moved from Savannah, Georgia to New York and he never found this bread. He was always looking for this taste of, of, of the bread. And one... Um, one uh, point to make is that perhaps it was also his childhood, but uh, he said it was the same bread I ate as a, as a child. Lawrence Gottlieb told me the recipe given to him by his father, Issa Gottlieb, who ran the bakery initially with his father and uncle for more than 50 years. The recipe was the same one his grandfather had brought with him from Eastern Europe. Um, Jewish style rye is the sourdough and that rye tang embedded in my memory comes from the starter lawrence makes it with his medium rye flour water and natural yeast the recipe is equally spare salt yeast caraway seeds flour water and the starter that's it he said the shelf life itself isn't there he admitted but that's not the point and i love the way he says that was it good as i remembered he starts my wife was asking for years she'd heard me Rhapsodize, that's an interesting verb, rhapsodize about the rye bread of my youth. And now, with decades of privatization, I had before me the genuine article, a sandwich of, on Gottlieb's rye. So Gottlieb Bakery in downtown Savannah, Georgia, had shut its doors in 1994, and I'd left town years before that. It had been more than 30 years since I last, ta last tasted its rye bread. It was conceivable that I romanticized it in the intervening in the interven, intervening years. That sandwich at hand was pedestrian, vegan bologna, power washed greens from a plastic clamshell, a slice of purple onion and Dijon mustard. But the first sharp bite of rye was transporting. The last time I'd eaten it was I was a carnivore making Rubens with my mother's corned beef instead of the tampa I use now. So that's also um, interesting how he became a vegetarian. But I also have fond memories of real uh, huge sandwiches. And here he's showing the old Gutley Bakery downtown Savannah, Georgia in the early 1970s and the bakery crew in 1984 uh, and grilling tempa. Tempe Ruben on Gutli Bry. So, uh, and it's also a story from America how all these small businesses shut down. And uh, he came to bury his mother, and then he discovered, and he wrote all the, the whole voyage of how he used to take two loaves of bread and put it in his suitcase to take to New York, and then he'd come back again. 
Um, so uh, this whole, and then all of a sudden the business has shut down, just like coronavirus had shut down. Um, so many losses, people die. She didn't die. His mother didn't die of Corona, but she also, uh, because of Corona, they couldn't come near her. And, um, so the whole, um, the whole, um, uh, and, and the way the funeral, there were not a lot of people at the funeral, um, the rest of the people watched on Zoom. Um, her mo his mother had COVID-19 and she was in isolation. She recovered but the uh, from the virus but died alone in, the aug in August after a fall. So uh, the whole memory of his childhood was basically food. Um, and from this wonderful people who ran this bakery that is... Uh, and um, but he said that uh, the problem was that um, she he always thought that the best bread was from his childhood, and um, he kept insisting it's not because uh, it was from Savannah, Georgia, but it was better. And he talked out about the the Jews only use this. Bread. And there's also a little bit of history of Savannah, Georgia. I actually visited. It's one of the most beautiful towns in America. Savannah, to the astonishment of my Yankee college friends, had been home to Jews since shortly after its founding in 1733. But by the early 20th century, the few thousand Jews had divided into three congregations representing the main branches of American Judaism. And for any community-wide wide activity, like Hebrew school or day camp, the Orthodox rabbis sought to impose their strict rules on everyone, including kosher food. One consequence in Skotlib was the only kosher bakery was that the snack time at day camp was bug juice and a thick, dense Skotlib shortbread cookie. No bar mitzvah party was complete without a bad local ba without a bad local band, a cover of Doobie Brothers, China Grove. And tables piled with good lips, goodies, rich brownies, moist rainbow cakes, and ice white petit fur adorned with a silvery candy pearl or the name of the girl or boy in honor of honor in blue icing. In those years, Goodlib's rye was part of how my parents cared for my three sisters and me. Decades later, it reappeared when we were taking care of my widowed octogenarian mother. So um, this whole voyage and everything through bread is just gorgeous. So Peace, Line, Love, it's a beautiful article. And uh, think about what foods of your childhood um, remind you of your childhood. What foods do you remember from your childhood that are either still there or have disappeared? I'm trying to think. Rye bread is definitely something I like, but it's not from my childhood. Um, I guess for me, it has to be cakes, uh, poppy seed cakes. Um, but maybe that's why I came back to Israel. I found it in Budapest, Hungarian poppy seed cakes. My grandmother 